Hi everyone, it's Jerry. 1997 marked an important time in chess history. That was when IBM's Deep Blue became the first computer to win a match against a reigning world champion, Garry Kasparov. Fast forward two decades. Computers nowadays are well beyond the play of humans. Today, 2017, also marks an important time in chess history. The Deep Mind division at Google headquarters has already tackled the game of Go, and now it's looking to conquer chess, and it appears that they have with the program Alpha Zero. Alpha Zero is equipped with two key components. One, deep neural networks, which is a way to process information that are inspired by biological systems, like the brain. And two, a general reinforcement learning algorithm. That basically means AlphaZero knows nothing beyond the rules of the game. No opening theory. No endgame table bases. It simply plays from scratch and continually improves from every game it plays against itself. Well, it certainly learned by playing against itself. It did this for just four hours and then went on to defeat the 2016 top chess engine champion Stockfish 8 in a 100-game match. Let that sink in for a moment. Chess is nearly 1,500 years old, and after all of these years spent acquiring knowledge about the game, we're bested by Alpha Zero after it learned for just four hours. The final tally, the final result of this 100-game match, Alpha Zero won 28 games with 72 draws, and every good math student knows how many losses. The game I like to share with you, Alpha Zero is playing with the black pieces. This is one of three games, Alpha Zero won with black. Uh, there is an advantage playing with the white pieces, having the first move of the game is an advantage. So, how did Alpha Zero manage to win when playing with black? Let's find out. We have an E4, E5 game. Roy Lopez. Berlin defense. I'm running Stockfish 8 on my system as I play through this game, by the way. Not the same hardware as what was used for the match. If you're interested in that information, the hardware, check out the link in the description for that and much more uh, information. There's a 19-page uh, PDF about this uh, match. Continuing d3, bishop c5, chop, chop. That right there is the first capture, and we're not going to see another one for about 40 moves. A lot of maneuvering goes on in this one. There's only 10 games, by the way, that have been made available to the public. 10 of the 100 games. Uh, I'm really interested in seeing these other 90. So let's get on that, Google. Can we see these other 90? It's, uh, I'm interested, and I'm sure many viewers are interested in seeing these other Alpha Zero games. So, Bishop D6, this guy here, by the way, does not budge for, I believe, the rest of the game. He stays put. There's uh, some pressure applied to him, and he is reinforced uh, numerous times, as we'll see. With the queen first, a pawn next, eventually a rook defends e5. a5 is there to expand on the queen side. Grab some queen side space, queen c2, knight f8. And after this structural change, c4, c5, we have d5. An interesting moment in the game. A pretty static structure for sure. Uh, it's a maneuvering game. Many instances of fixed pawn, a fixed uh, a center. D5 is one of just a few moves white makes in black's position. We have D5. We have, much later on, a simple capture on D5, or really a, a recapture on D5. And once uh, we're at a point where white is already lost, we'll, we'll see a move from A4 to A5. But beyond that, Beyond these three simple moves in black's position, there's really no other action. Uh, white isn't, isn't even allowed to really step foot in black's house. So let's see how things progress. 
a little stabilizing move with b6. This knight is eyeing up f5, but alpha 0 has, uh, you know, that's just not going to happen. Knight f3, bishop d7. Things are looking, you know, equal-ish. Well, actually, uh, stockfish 8 right now is uh, plus 0.5. And uh, it was even a little bit more just a moment ago. But uh, after h3, this is another point in the game that I'd like to touch on. The one that I, I find interesting. The 10 games that have been released, they were all, uh, all had their interesting points. But what I liked about this is that uh, Alpha Zero won with Black, of course. And it apparently already understands that this is a position where White. Uh, struggles to find a constructive pawn break. Where is there a, a good pawn break for white that will, let's say, improve the quality of the pieces? I don't see it. Unfortunately for white, we're going to observe uh, a lot of nothing moves, non-committal, shuffling, king moves, bishop moves, Meanwhile, black is able to slowly make some progress. Let's see how this is done. It's a very interesting, uh, a very, very slick maneuver that black pulls off here. Queen g7. We're not, we're not quite at that point, but it's, 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 it's nearby. A3, h6, bishop to h4. I'd like you to take note of these positions right here, the bishop and the rook. This is the first time we're seeing this position right here. Bishop on g3, rook on e7. Bishop h4 is played, rook to f7. Bishop g3 is played, the rook returns to e7. This is now the second time, the second instance of this very position. Why am I drawing attention to this? Well... White continues with bishop to h4, rook to f7, and white goes back to g3. What does this mean? What is one way to maybe interpret this? Well, if alpha 0 wants a draw, if alpha 0 wants this game to be over, it'll move this rook to e7, and the game becomes a draw due to threefold repetition. It's one of the rules. Black, with uh, the next move, says, play ball. No draw. A4, clamping down on these two pawns. Black wants more. So, apparently, Alpha Zero recognizes that it's better here, even though, you know, we're seeing on the screen... Stockfish is slightly better. Again, not the same hardware, but yeah, apparently Alpha Zero thinks it's uh, it's better here. Otherwise, it uh, it would have gone for the repetition. I would think. What do I know? What do we know? <laughs> Let's see. King to H1. This is what I mean by a bit of a nothing move. You can't. You don't know if the king is any better on G1 than H1. There's. It's just a passing, non-committal move. So, rook to e7. This is another case where, take note of these two positions currently. Bishop on g3, rook on f7. Rook e7, bishop h4, rook f7, rook g3. This is now the second time we have this same position. Rook to e7, bishop h4. If alpha 0 moves this rook now to this square, that gives white an opportunity to return to g3, and claim a threefold repetition. Once more, Alpha Zero says, No, I want more. G5 is played. Bishop G3, Knight G6. This is a beautiful square for the Knight. Possible jumping points on F4 and H4. But now Black is preparing to simply negate the Knight. Knight E3 is met with Knight to E7, fighting for the F5 square. Queen to d3, and now black, as mentioned earlier, is going to make some steady progress, kicking off first with an expansion on the king side. h5, h4, 
And now knight to c8, the beginning of a very nice maneuver. I haven't pointed this out yet, but this bishop has been uh, suffering from tall pawn syndrome. Uh, he does not belong there. The most efficient piece to blockade the d5 pawn is a knight. Why? Well, he's not completely defensive like the bishop, for one. He's actually a very good attacking piece, putting pressure on the e4 and c4 points. So, this is what we're going to have, g4. The queen is getting out of the way, so the bishop can go to a much more active diagonal, and the knight can simply drop into d6. This is a wonderful way to reposition the pieces. Very, very instructive. King to g1. Again, a lot of nothing moves by white. The knight's looking for c3. Knight d6. Bishop to h6. Rook to f1. That move is very difficult. I just do not know what in the world is going on with rook to a8. I guess maybe anticipating some break over here or some pressure against a4. I cannot really say what's going on with that move. So we see a shift in this uh, evaluation, by the way. It's already it's in the negatives now. Stockfish is not liking its position, and it's just going to get worse. So we have the king coming over towards the center with still all this traffic on board may seem a little bit crazy to do this, but there is some security with the king being on the e6 square. So bishop for knight exchange. Not sure how good the bishops are in these locked positions. Really the the key pieces in this position are the knights. And let's take it take these posts into account. Knight comparison. Who's doing better? It's definitely the black knight. He's putting pressure on the white pieces that require the defense of white pieces. Meanwhile, this knight is staring at his own pawns and squares that he's never going to be able to successfully jump into. These forward moves by the white knight are all no good. Either illegal or just, yeah, he's negated very easily. White is on the defensive. White also, if we compare the king positions, is much better off. The white king stands on a half-open file for black. Meanwhile, the black king is on a closed file. Black has a much more secure king and will find it much easier to shift pieces now over towards the king side of the board. What will the white king do? Let's find out. Bishop to e8, queen h7. That's just anticipating rook g3. So we're going to have some major pieces coming off. One rook. And now a second rook. The queens in minor pieces. Queen is looking to invade. Knight to d2 prevents this. A growing advantage, as we can see from the uh, Stockfish 8 engine I'm running. King h2. King to d7 is probably uh, the better square, staying on a light square. So he's not going to ever move and give check. So white tries to make some progress over here on the queen side with a pawn move. This is not helping uh, this pawn. You know, he's still, both of these guys here are still going to remain weak. So queen to g6. You have to defend e4. So knight there. And that that is blocking the uh, the queen side of d1. So black's able to now sneak the bishop in. Well beyond, uh, well behind enemy lines here. Looking for some maneuver. Bishop to a4. At any point, if white is not careful, this bishop can get into position to maybe hunt down the c4 pawn. So the white pieces constantly have to uh, keep a watchful eye over these points. It's all because of this knight on d6, that great uh, reposition that we saw getting into the d6 square. So, how do things progress here? We're eventually going to have a queen exchange. And now this king is way out of play, and without the queen around, these guys easily fall to both the uh, bishop and knight. They can be attacked twice, and there could only ever be 
one defender, and he's it. Meanwhile, wherever this bishop goes, he's just biting on rocks. What do you do? Attack e5, attack f5, does nothing. So what is tried is this little breaking up type thing, softening up the c5 square. White's trying to get at this point, but the knight is there, uh, prepared to meet a5 with knight takes pawn, keeping the structure as is, in other words. Eventually, we're going to have these pawns drop. There isn't a good way to defend. c6 break is in. This is what I meant by one of the moves in black's position, a simple recapture, which is really not like a move in black's position, a recapturing move like that. But black is now up one pawn. This king is finally uh, getting involved. He was way out of play. And we're going to have the knights off an opposite color bishop ending. An outside pass pawn, which is very valuable. And eventually, the black king is able to make some progress. Where is he headed? The bishop controls this pawn advance. The king is headed for this square here, where he simply forks those two pawns and is going to win one. So that's exactly what happens. Nothing much that uh, black can do about that. It's a second pawn, one for alpha go, or excuse me, uh, alpha zero. And after we get to this point here, king to e6, move 87. Stockfish has had enough. This is where uh, the game ends. Stockfish throws in the towel. If the game continued, how it might play out, this is just one of many ways. It could have finished right down to, let's say, checkmate. I'll just throw all the moves out there. That's one fancy way the game could have ended. But in this one, it only got to move 87 right here after king to e6. Stockfish resigns. So this is really, uh, I don't know, mind-blowing is one of the terms that comes to mind here. What are your thoughts of this Alpha Zero? Be sure to leave a comment uh, below, and uh, I'm looking forward to your replies. This is just some fascinating stuff that we're being made aware of. It's, really, it's a really exciting time to be involved with chess, and uh, I'm looking forward to any comments you have in the comment section below. So, as usual, feel free to leave any feedback. And I hope you got something out of this video. That's all for now. Take care. Bye.